Hello and welcome back again to Archaeology 101 and today I'm going to be discussing the first homo species, Homo habilis, also known as handyman. The species was first discovered in Olduvai Gorge, Tanzania in 1955 by the Leakey crew and there was a long period of time where it was hypothesized where this new species sat in the human lineage. But finally, in 1964, it was finally announced that this was probably the earliest Homo species that we have. And they named it Homo habilis or handyman, as it was dubbed because of the tools associated with it. And while there are some disagreements on the classification of the species with conjectures of whether it could be Homo rudolfensis, for example, or something else. But for the moment, the name has stuck. There are very few fossils of Homo habilis, but the dating from these few fossils have shown that it existed around 2.4 million years ago and then spanned out until about 1.4 million years ago. I'll just reiterate the small number of fossils of habilis that we actually have. Back in 2012, there was a statistic that said there were 10 habilis fossils. That number's increased slightly since then. Uh, but this patchwork has been built up of what habilis may have looked like. And we have a rough consensus on habilis physiology. So the brain was slightly larger than the Australopithecines before it, but not by much, being between 600 and 800 cc. The foot bones show that it was well adapted for bipedal movement, but probably could be well versed in climbing trees as well. Um, and it would be great for moving across uh, tall grassland. Bipedalism is a great advantage for this. Uh, the teeth have a slight reduction compared to the older Australopithecines. However, they retain some of that enamel thickness and they have strong jaw muscles as well, which have dietary implica implications, which I'll touch on in just a moment. The teeth and jaws of Habilis present a species that was capable of eating tough foods such as roots and tubers, which we call underground storage organs or USOs. However, we know that Habilis was also consuming meat, and this comes from cut marks on bone and associated stone chopping tools as well, which shows that Habilis was probably a sca scavenger who could extract marrow from a carcass and maybe even drive a predator away from a fresh kill to access the meat, which we call aggressive scavenging. There isn't much evidence for a varied toolkit for habilis besides the old Doan chopper tools, which are just stone tools rudimentally napped to make a sharp edge for cutting and also blunt edges for crushing. And these were probably discarded after their use and weren't retained. However, a consistent topic in academia is the evidence for organic tools such as wood, which habilis may have been able to use, but we wouldn't know exactly because preserved samples for these are very, very rare. In reality, habilis most likely didn't need a varied toolkit to be successful in its environment anyway, as shown by its longevity. And I've left the most complicated subject for last, society, and this is very hard to discern. There is virtually no indication on what Havilis societies were like, although they most likely lived in groups and perhaps displayed some limited sexual dimorphism, uh, which has some indications on sexual competition with males competing against other males for mating rights, for example. However, only time really will tell what Havilis may have been like, and it would take a really well-preserved fossil and site survey to be able to understand what habilis were like interacted with each other um, and how they explored the landscape together. That's pretty much it for habilis at this point in time. Like I said before, I'm waiting for some big paper to come and answer all of these questions, which I'll then make an updated video on when and if that happens. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on Archaeology 101.